Greetings and welcome. On today's episode, episode 58, we're going to be focusing on making the immersive engineering garden cloche. It's going to take us uh, maybe an episode or two to get it all together and to get it in place, but I think it'll be a great way and a unique way for us to grow the living material that we need for our RF tools mob spawner setup. So let's just jump right in. So first thing I'm going to do here is let's give the recipe a look here and see what we're going to need to be able to make this cloche. So here we have the garden cloche from Immersive Engineering and it's going to require some type of glass, except any block glass. It's going to require treated planks, which we don't have yet, and an iron, an iron mechanical component, which is pretty simple, it's just iron plates with a copper ingot and then the more difficult thing will be the vacuum tube which will require an engineer's blueprint and it will also require these four items you know pretty much any type of glass redstone and copper wires which really aren't super hard to make but we'll get into that as we go through this first thing we're going to try to make is the treated planks. Now treated planks are pretty simple. The recipe for some reason will not show up in, in JEI, but we know them from previous experience that it's pretty much required, it pretty much requires creosote oil to be able to make them. So what I did is I ended up making a reservoir full of creosote oil. And I just stole it from our little bucket over here, or our portable tank, and filled it right up. So basically all we're going to need to do is take our planks here and surround the reservoir and now we have the treated wood planks. So we have our creosote in the middle, planks on the outside. We now have 64 uh, treated wood planks. And we still have quite a bit of creosote left over. But with that, let's look into the next step for our cloche here the mechanical component and it's made of lots of iron so let's get a stack of iron up in there let's get it compressing so we need to go to our compactor I think that's what we're gonna need and we're gonna use it to compress our iron I just need a place to put it hmm it's a good question here Those are just regular birchwood planks. Well, we can fix that right there. We'll just set it right here for the moment. Let's grab a leadstone flux duct. There we go. This should do the trick. Put it right there like so. This right on top. And we should be able to drop that right in there. Yep, and with our upgrades, it'll make those plates pretty doggone quick. So let's let that work while we work on the next part. We're going to need to be able to make those vacuum tubes. And the vacuum tubes are pretty simple. But the biggest hurdle that we're going to have to get through is this engineering workbench. We're going to need to make one of these. Now that's pretty simple. We're going to need treated wood fences, a crafting table, and just regular planks, as you can see. So, I mean treated planks. So let's work on getting our crafting table first here. Let's take a few pieces of wood because we're going to need regular wood. And let's replenish our supply of planks over there. There we go. We'll take four of these and make our crafting table. Now let's see what it takes to make those fences. Okay, so we're going to need some treated sticks and some wood planks. Okay, so we can make them the normal way we'd make them, just only using the treated wood. So we'll put this here and we'll get three pieces. So we'll be able to make at least one workbench. So let's go make our workbench here. And there we go. We now have our engineering workbench. First step down. So let's set it down over here. Okay, and now let's continue. We're going to need some blueprints. So we're going to need engineering blueprints. It's got several recipes to be able to make them. One 
note that I noticed is steel, which is crazy. We want one that's just for vacuum tubes. So we're going to make this one here, which is going to require copper, aluminum, iron, and lapis, and some dyes. So let's grab that stuff. And then aluminum. I can't remember which one aluminum is. Made enough of them here. It won't tell me what it is. Just have to guess. I think it's this one. Ha! I'm right. I got it first try. So let's jump in here and make that one. For the vacuum tube. And now we have the one needed to be able to make the iron mechanical component. So, let's go over here to our workbench. Let's put it in there. And then we pick, yep, we pick this one out of them. Okay. But we can also make the vacuum tube with it. Very nice. So, let's make our iron mechanical components now. Let's check and check on our materials up here. We're not going to need these or these at this point. See how many plates we have now. We have a full stack of plates. So as a precautionary measure, I think we already had some made. Yeah, we already had 18 of them made. But I'm going to make a whole other stack. Because I have a feeling we're going to need quite a few of these cloches. And what's that rule? Go big or go home. So that's what, exactly what we're going to do. So let's go in here. And let's see here. Oh, it required copper. That's what it was. I'm trying to think there for a second. What else was the other one that we needed? So we're going to need copper and this iron like so. And we'll get eh, 20 is quite a few. Let's start with 10. There we go. And we'll see what that makes. So now we have our iron mechanical component. Now we just need to make these ones. So let's cut up some copper plates, which we have in there. We can use shears or whatever, so we might as well just use shears. It's pretty simple to make shears. And we already have a set, so that works out pretty well. We have 30 copper plates, and since we need 10 of them, we're going to need at least 20 of them. There we go. So now we got 20 of those. I'm not sure how many this will give us here. Yeah, 20 will work. We'll put our little clippers back. And we'll be back in action. Okay, so now we have that. Now we need 20 redstone. And then we'll need 20 glass. There we go. We got that. So let's put these components in here. And then we'll put that in there. Okay, it'll make 30 vacuum tubes. That is more than what we need, but that'll work out. So, let's see here. Yep, 21 is more, is a better number. Okay, so we'll take this out of here. We'll put back the rest of our stuff. And then, we cleaned up our inventory. We have our mechanical, our vacuum tube. What else do we need? We're going to need quite a bit of glass. And that should be it. So let's try 64 glass and see how many this will make. It'll make 10. That's a good that's a good starting point for us. So now we have 10 of our garden cloches. Now, to set one of these up, I'm not entirely sure what it takes here. So let's figure it out. So what I can tell from this, well, let's space it a little bit differently this time cuz I think we're going to need access to the back while we experiment with it. So let's set it right here. And with that, we need to figure out what all the ports do and or can do. So first thing we know is it's gonna need some power. So let's get it some power here. Let's put our advanced energy cell on it and make sure it's set to output, which it is. And let's see that it uh, should show up that it's full on power. It shows it's full of, on power on the outside interface. There it goes. 
on the inside interface. And of course, you're gonna need dirt to uh, to take care of it. And then we're gonna need some carrots. And as you can see, we already have quite a few here. You'll need to put some sort of carrots in here. Now, the next thing that you need to add in there is it's gonna need some water. So I already got a portable tank ready to go. We need some item ducts, some servos, and some fluid ducts. So what we'll do here, yeah, we might as well take a couple crates, we'll see how that works. What we'll do here is we need to find one that connects to, and you can change these two while you're at it. So if you, if you see that it's the square with the orange in the middle, if I just right click it, it may go on the interface, but it also changes it. See? Like so. It rotate. Ah, oh, rotates interfaces. Got it. So we got our portable tank here, and then what we'll do is we'll add a servo to our portable tank, like so. So we're pumping water in there. So now it will work. The growth is regular speed. You notice it says there's no growth modifier to it, and you can watch the carrots grow. Now what we can do is we can make some fertilizer. So what we'll do here is we'll take two stacks of that and a stack of that. This will make us some fertilizer. We'll be using the forestry fertilizer because it'll work fairly well and we can make it fairly easily. Oh, we got more sand than what we needed. Okay. So let's find a way to pipe that in there now too. So let's see here. To pipe that in there, we're going to need, well, let's use a small storage crate. And we'll set it right there as an example. And we'll put that on there, and then of course we'll do the same thing we did before. Add a servo. Click on the servo, change it out. Oops. Let's switch that so we have an open hand. Let's add in our fertilizer. Now you are, you can already see that it's already moved some over. So let's check on it here. It added it in there. Now you'll notice our, well it doesn't say our growth modifier is 1.5. It should say our growth modifier is 1.5 with the addition of the fertilizer anyway. Maybe it has to wait for a full cycle to be done before it takes into effect. We'll check back with that here in a second. Now the next thing you're going to want to do is be able to pump out the carrots or whatever you're going to be growing. We got the carrots here. Now, the only place I've been able to find to get it out is this front panel right here. So again, we take our item ducts and we put them on there and put a storage crate out here like so. Now, it's automatically pumping out those carrots. Did you see that? There's no more carrots in here and now there's 16 carrots in here. We don't even need a servo for that. It's pretty nice. And you see the carrots just pump right out. So, we got our setup here with our growth. We got our setup with our fertilizer. We got our water. And we got our power. And so this garden cloche will work really, really well for the setups that we're trying to make with it. So this will be able to provide the living matter that we're going to need for our RF tool spawner. And or even for anything else we want to do. We can add several of these. We have, we have lots of materials to be able to make more garden garden cluches and we already have 10 of them already so in the next episode what i'm going to do is i'm going to dig out an area so that we can set these up and make them look make them look good i think that's what we should go for and we'll pump them into our system we'll have fertilizer set up for them and make it look as good as we can we're still not using fertilizer that is crazy. I'm guessing we're going to have to wait for this fertilizer cycle to cycle through before it takes over on the growth medium. And what I'll do is we will check back in as soon as this thing runs out. So we're back. And as you can see, we're almost there. It's going to roll over. And there it goes. You saw it eat the one piece of fertilizer. And now the growth modifier is 1.5. That's almost as good as you can get. The only thing better is some of the thermal expansion um, dust that can be used to, for growth enhancement. So with that, we have a basic idea of how we're going to set it up. And from there, we're going to make it our advanced setup 
so that it looks nice and so that it functions well. And that's always what we aim for. So thank you guys again for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.